Hi guys, last week I uploaded a video about the general running costs of an electric car. And when I say running costs, I mean fuel, maintenance, tyres, insurance, that sort of thing. Now in the video I specifically stated I wasn't going to include purchase price and therefore depreciation because it's impossible to do a sweeping electric car statement about how much they depreciate. Very much in the same way that you can't say all petrol or all diesel cars depreciate by X amount. It's just impossible. For example, you can buy a car for £2, £200, £2,000, £2 million. The depreciation will be wildly different across the board. So as a generalised statement, it's impossible to do, which is why I didn't do it. Of course, that doesn't stop YouTube users from bombarding me with messages saying you need to include depreciation to have the full running costs of a car. Now, although I agree with that statement, as a generalised electric car thing, it's, it's just not possible. Or is it possible? I'm certainly going to attempt it by showing you exactly how much I have lost in depreciation on my Nissan Leaf over the last two years. I'm also going to explain why you should completely ignore clickbait titles like this. Why do electric cars lose so much value so fast? So what do you think I've lost in two years on this Nissan Leaf? I'm fairly certain that whatever you're thinking right now in percentage or in pound terms, you're probably wrong. So, let's find out. So you need two things to figure out depreciation. One, how much you paid for the car in the first place, and two, how much it's worth right now. So for that, I'm gonna to have to go back home and dig through my paperwork. Exciting times. Oh, right, okay, so I have my documents here from Nissan, uh, from when we first bought the car. This is it, I will put a picture up, but obviously most of it will be blacked out because it's all my personal data. Now the list price for my leaf after the government grant was over £26,000. But of course, only a moron pays the list price, barring a few manufacturers of course. So the actual price I paid for the car, instead of the list of 26 in a bit, was £15,728. So there we go. 26000 and whatever for the list price, 15728 for the actual price I paid, as this screenshot will now show you. As I said, most of it has been blanked out for obvious reasons. It was also not percent finance, so I didn't pay any interest payments either, and we have now paid the balloon payment at the end of the PCP. So we know how much I bought the car for, 157 how much is it worth now? Now I've had a good look on Auto Trader, and the prices tend to be between 13 and a half and 14 and a half for my specific uh, car and, and spec. However, I've spoken to two different electric car used specialists who, for the past several years, have just sold used electric cars. I'm no expert. I would like to think they are the experts because they're the ones that have been selling them and still are. So thank you for Lewis at eCars Trading and to Jonathan Portfield from ecocars.net. So he's had a good look for me on the cap guide as well as using his own knowledge and he was saying that it should be worth about 13 to 50 trade value. So we've got Auto Trader saying between 13 and a half and 14 and a half and him saying 13 to 50 trade value. Now I always sell my cars privately because you get the best value for it, but not everybody does that. So to be generous and to try and make it as fair as possible, I'm going to say that my car is worth 13,000 pounds, which is cheaper than what they are saying there. So now we know how much I've paid and how much it's worth now, give or take, let's figure out what the depreciation is. Just to make it easy, I'm going to say 15,700 minus 13,000, which is of course 2,700, and that is over two years. So basically, I have lost 1,350 pounds per year on my Nissan Leaf 30 kilowatt hour Ascenta. Now, the reason I've picked a two year depreciation test is because my car is obviously two years old, but the 30 kilowatt hour Leaf has only been out about two and a half years now, so we can't do a proper three year kind of guide. And remember, this is designed for all electric cars, but I'm using the Leaf as because I have one, obviously. Um, but the residual values of all electric cars are very similar to the Leaf. I'm excluding Tesla in that because obviously they are way more expensive. So what's that as a percentage? I've paid 15.7, I've dropped to 7. Okay, so 17.2% near as damn it, I have lost in depreciation in percentage terms in two years. So we're talking about just over 8.5% per year. And typically any car will lose the most of its value in the first year alone. So if anything, that should be less in year three. 
I have proven how much I've paid. I have got experts to tell me how much it is worth now, as well as having a look on auto trade myself, which you can do, of course. Uh, and that is how much I have lost, basically, in depreciation. 17.2% for an electric car, which for any car is brilliant. I'm sorry, but that is very, very low depreciation. Now, of course, some of you are probably wondering how have I got a car for 15.7 that has a list price of over 26,000? Well, basically, I do my research. I spent hours online looking for the best prices and I contacted nine different dealerships for the best price. Now, during that research, I did figure out, because obviously I got lots of prices from lots of dealers, that the average price for my car was about £17,000. That's what most dealers were churning out, um, no matter who was contacting them. So if we use that, the average of 17000 uh, rather than the, the good price I've achieved. So we're looking at 23.5% uh, in two years in depreciation if you'd have paid seventeen grand for my car, which was the average at the time. Remember the 30 kilowatt hour Leaf had only been out a couple of months. It was quite a new model for its time. Obviously my Leaf, this shape, has uh, has gone now. It has been replaced with the new shape and the new Leaf is a lot more expensive. So there's no point in looking on Nissan's website to see what the current prices are because the new Leaf is more expensive than the old one. Um, because there are there, there were a lot of dealer discounts and, and, and Nissan discounts for the previous first generation Leaf. Ultimately because they needed to try and tempt early adopters like myself into them. And whilst I was talking to uh, Jonathan from EcoCars, he did say that the Leaf 30 kilowatt hour uh, is really strong right now on the used market, as is the 24. And he states here, and I quote, uh, I'm still paying above £8,000 for the 2014 Ascent Leaf, which is the same as he was paying for that same car 18 months ago. So in 18 months, a 2014 Leaf hasn't dropped in value at all. Even though it's 18 months older, it's probably done another 10 to 15,000 miles more, it's still going for above £8,000, which pretty much is the same across the board in terms of uh, you know, Leafs, i3s, I'm guessing Zoe's, I, I don't know, you know Kia Souls, Hyundai Ioniqs, all of them uh, are in a similar kind of boom at the moment in terms of used car prices. Now, he's the expert, okay? He's buying them day in, day out, as is Lewis from eCars Trading. They are both doing this, they are both saying the same thing, that used EV prices are holding steady. So back to that headline that I posted up earlier there. Why do electric cars lose so much value so fast? From Doug DeMuro, who's obviously an expert in these things. Although it is worth stating that he is an American person who will be basing it on American prices. I'm in the UK, I have no idea what it's doing in America, but these are UK prices. This video is about UK depreciation. So how does Doug or the Daily Mail or, or even Auto Express figure out depreciation? This is a little capture from the Auto Express website, which according to this, the Nissan Leaf will retain 23% of its value after three years. Now, obviously, I have completely disproven that beyond a shadow of a doubt, but this is how they figure it out. This is how the, the, the media, the automotive journalists, if you like, figure out depreciation and why you should ignore it. So these are my figures on the left. This is the automotive journalist figures on the right. We know what the car's worth now after two years, but what do they do? Well. I paid 15.7 as you know for my car. What they do is go off the list price and nothing else. And with any car, let alone an electric one, with the exception of a few uh, brands that, that, that just sell it at that price and nothing else, like Tesla, nobody pays the list price. In fact, most people don't even come close to paying the list price, as I did. They're saying that the Nissan Leaf average cost new is £28,000. <laughs> and that you'll lose £21,000 in three years. So this is what they do. They'll look at list price, they'll look at what cap typically or the used values are now and go, oh my God, they've lost all that money. But like a Ford Fiesta, a Focus, a Golf, you can get them substantially cheaper than the list price. And what they should do is ask someone like Nissan, what's your average sell price for a Leaf? And then base it on that rather than the list price. It's a load of bollocks. List prices are irrelevant. That is the most you will pay not what you will pay. So this is why you should ignore headlines like that, because ultimately they're basing it on completely flawed data. I would like to think that I have proven to you how much I have paid and how much an average person would have paid. 
No doubt someone on YouTube, the naysayers typically will say, well, well, now in terms of car makers like Tesla, who do set the price, there's no haggling, there's no daily discounts or anything like that. That, yes, you can use list price because you do pay the list price. So to try and answer the questions from the people that constantly bombard my channel, uh, any time I do an electric car video of, well, they're really expensive to buy, they uh, lose a ton of money very fast, it, I would like to think I've proven to you that is not the case. 15 grand might not be uh, a cheap car. I'm not saying it is for what is a Ford Focus Golf sized car, uh, but it's not 28 grand, which is probably what most people are thinking they are. It's amazing how many people who have never even sat in an electric car tell me how it is. It's astonishing that they're so knowledgeable. EVs are in a very strong uh, depreciation curve, if you like, at the moment as is proven by the the two expert companies that I spoke to there. And I don't expect that to change anytime soon. The one thing that affects use prices for anything, gold, oil, cars, is supply and demand. And at the moment, people are getting electric cars. They're looking into them. A lot more people are wanting one. And they still only account for something like 0.3% of all private cars in the UK. I'm on about full electric here, not just plug-in. So there's very little in terms of numbers. There's a lot of people looking for them. If you're watching this video, you either have one or you're thinking about getting one, I would imagine. And what happens when something is in relatively high demand and has got low supply? Supply and demand. Well, the price goes up, of course. A lot of people are looking to the used EV side, mainly for a second car or a commuting car, or just to save a bit of money because they do a lot of miles. And there's, there's not enough around. Supply and demand, that's, that's, that's what it is. And considering that every new electric car that you buy at the moment is uh, has anywhere from a three to 12 months waiting time, that's only gonna have the effect of increasing the used car values. Because for those that don't want to wait up to 12 months for a new car, because they're just not making enough of them or quick enough. So obviously that means more people are looking at used ones or buying used ones, which makes the price go up. Now I suspect this to go on for two to three years at least in terms of uh, EV used prices. Car manufacturers aren't making enough of them to meet demand, which means, in a, the used market is going to be equally undersupplied in, in a year or two years or three years. So this is the whole point of the video. I said at the, the start that you cannot do all cars depreciate by X or all electric cars depreciate by X percent or X pounds. There's too many different brands, there's too many different types out there. That still remains. However, electric cars are in a very strong position at the moment and will be for some time. That's what I'm trying to, to get across now. So if you're thinking about buying a new one, you're going to lose money, of course. But at least no more than a normal car, probably less. If you're thinking about buying a used EV, you will lose very, very little because they're in such high demand. Supply, demand, supply, demand. Among the depreciation comments, I've got lots of other comments, typically about batteries. So even though I addressed batteries in that video, people obviously glossed over it or skipped it or just completely ignored it. I don't know. So just to reiterate, you do not need to replace the batteries on any electric car after three or four or five or six or seven years. You do not need to do that, okay? It's a myth. For one, my leaf, as an example, comes with an eight year, eight year warranty. That's 100,000 miles as well. And that doesn't mean it needs replacing after eight years. That means Nissan guarantee that it will have at least 75% of its original capacity after eight years. Okay, so you've got three quarters of it, minimum of three quarters of its original capacity after it's done eight years or 100,000 miles, which means by the time it's done 200,000 miles, it's probably got a minimum of 50, 60%. But that's done 200,000 miles by that point. There are Teslas out there with 450,000 miles on it. Google it if you don't believe me. And they've still got above, I think it's 85 or 90% battery health after 400 and odd thousand miles. Batteries will need replacing eventually and then get recycled in the same way that a petrol or a diesel engine will need replacing eventually and then presumably get recycled. I have never said in any of my videos to buy an electric car because they're better for the environment, but people still insist on bombarding me with they actually kill the environment because of, uh, in fact, I'm not gonna mention it anymore. This is a financial video, that's all it's about. So I don't know why people keep on bringing up the environment. I've not gone down that route. I'm not telling you they're better for the environment. So you don't need to post anything up regarding it. 
<laughs> okay. So there we go. Hopefully I have proven or disproven what you thought about EV depreciation. And I would also go as far to say that a good portion of EVs out there will depreciate less than their petrol or diesel equivalents. Put it this way, if I asked you to tell me what the average depreciation for a petrol car was, could you answer that question? No, no one can. So I've done what I can. I hope that makes sense to you. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Please put a comment below, if a constructive comment. You don't, you don't have to abuse me. I get enough abuse at home. So yeah, if you've got anything to say about this, have I got anything wrong? Or if you think I'm lying about the facts and figures that I've given you. If you can, click the subscribe button. I try and post up on a weekly basis and there are over 100 videos in my channel right now. Some of them are quite funny about EVs, some of them are about the challenges I've done in EVs and some of them are, well, garbage if I'm honest. But you get the point. So yeah, I hope that made sense. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon.